Hi friends, welcome to our next video in our five minute recap series. Today's conference style was also a 20 questions conference, meaning the residents had 20 questions to arrive at a diagnosis. And they arrived at today's diagnosis of acute chest syndrome with only 12 questions, which is very impressive. I think we're going to have to start decreasing the number of total questions they can ask because they've been doing really well. And so we presented a 28-year-old woman who was coming in with chest pain and then astutely asking questions which relate to chest pain. The residents quickly sorted out the description of the chest pain, looked at an EKG, which demonstrated sinus tachycardia without any ST or T wave changes and a high sensitivity troponin just slightly above the upper limit of normal for a female patient. And so they were confident that they could rule out uh, a myocardial uh, infarction type event, STEMI or NSTEMI, and had other diagnoses higher on the differential. They also, through asking about medications, discovered that the patient had a history of sickle cell anemia, which then quickly led them to a, an appropriate differential, including acute chest syndrome. As more information was revealed, including the fact that the patient had fever, tachycardia on exam, eight labs in, with signs of inflammation and a low hemoglobin level, um, and then ultimately a D-dimer of 620, which we suspected was likely due to chronic inflammation and on top of acute inflammation. Currently, it was still imperative that the residents obtain a CTPE, which they did, which did not demonstrate a PE. As you can see, it was by question six that they wanted to see a chest X-ray, which is shown here, which demonstrates bibasal or infiltrates, which are new for this patient. Ultimately, the patient was diagnosed with acute chest syndrome. And we discussed that the causes uh, of acute chest syndrome in adults include fat emboli and pulmonary microthrombi, as well as infection, including COVID-19. And then finally, asthma and other hypoxemic conditions, which can worsen sickling and can cause capillaritis, as well as capillary um, thrombosis and stasis. The diagnostic criteria are that you, one must have a new segmental radiographic pulmonary infiltrate and ideally bilateral as was seen in this patient, though you cannot rule out test, acute chest syndrome with a unilateral infiltrate and it must remain in your differential for a patient with sickle cell anemia. And any one of the following uh, guidelines. And so in this patient, we had shown that the patient had RALS, the patient had mild tachypnea, and as well was setting at only 90% on room air, which was decreased from her prior two session. And so she fit the criteria of acute chest syndrome. Finally, as far as treatment goes, um, there are some treatments which you should do for every patient and then others which you may hear about, but there's no good data surrounding them. So what should you do for all patients that you suspect have acute chest syndrome? So making sure that you're giving them plenty of IV fluids as they tend to be in an inflammatory state and dehydrated. This patient had tachycardia, which we can relate likely to both her pain and her dehydration. All of these patients need excellent pain control. Um, often patients with acute chest syndrome present with uh, sickle cell crises, which must be managed with adequate pain control. This patient was on oral opioids at home, and so the residents appropriately would like to put her on a PCA while she's inpatient to control her pain. Next are antibiotics. Recall that ACS or acute chest syndrome cannot be differentiated from pneumonia on, a, on clinical grounds. And we don't do more invasive tests like bronchoscopies or biopsies to truly look at those bacterial organisms. And so you're going to use antibiotics in all patients in whom you suspect ACS because this can also be bilateral pneumonia. And so for most of these patients, you'll use a cephalosporin like cetraxone or cefaximin plus an atypical coverage with azithromycin. All of these patients, while admitted, need to be on VTE prophylaxis unless they're on DVT therapeutic doses at home for previous incidents of PE or DVT. Finally, it is recommended that patients with acute chest syndrome and essentially any patient with sickle cell crisis receive a simple transfusion if their hemoglobin is less than five.
Now on to the therapies which you may hear about, but there's no good data surrounding our bronchodilators, which are recommended to be used if the patient has asthma and are wheezing. Next up are steroids. We generally avoid these unless the patient is having a severe asthma or allergic reaction, which you think may be causing their acute chest syndrome, but there are no good randomized trials to support the use of steroids routinely in these patients. As far as exchange blood transfusions go, which are often used in patients who are quite ill with their sickle cell crisis, um, is something to be considered here, but is usually utilized in severe or multi-organ failure type of acute chest syndrome. There are two ACS entities. One is sort of run-of-the-mill acute chest syndrome, uh, as was present in this patient, and then the other is a rapidly progressive acute chest syndrome, which results in multi-organ failure. And in both cases, exchange blood transfusions are recommended with a max hemoglobin limit of 10. Finally, as far as antiplatelet agents goes, like aspirin or prasugrel, the data neither supports nor refutes the use of this to prevent thrombotic events in the future. And so having a risk-benefit discussion with this patient and looking at their other comorbidities will be helpful in deciding whether you place this patient on long-term uh, aspirin or not. So I hope that that was helpful for you. Again, we discussed acute chest syndrome and the residents did a fantastic job coming up with the diagnosis. Thanks so much for watching.